Hello, I'm Alex Hui. Today is November 14th, and it is World Diabetes Day. World Diabetes Day was launched in 1991 by WHO and the International Diabetes Federation. It is held each year on November 14th to raise the awareness of diabetes. And it is selected as this day because it is the birthday of Canadian scientist Frederick Banting, who co-discovered insulin with Charles Best back in 1922. So according to the International Diabetes Federation, in 2021, approximately 537 million adults are living with diabetes. Almost one in two, about 240 million adults living with diabetes are undiagnosed. Diabetes caused 6.7 million deaths. Diabetes caused at least US $966 billion in health expenditure. More than 1.2 million children and adolescents are living with type 1 diabetes. 541 million adults are at increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes. According to WHO in 2019, diabetes is the ninth leading cause of death globally. The International Diabetes Federation projects the total number of people to be 643 million by 2030. Due to the rising numbers of diabetic patients, together with this year's World Diabetes Day theme, which is Education to Protect Tomorrow, I would like to make a series of videos regarding diabetes to raise awareness. So I will be talking about what is diabetes from a modern medicine standpoint, from a traditional Chinese medicine standpoint, and how to prevent and treat diabetes using lifestyle habits, diets, exercises, pressure point massages, and so on. So in this video, I will first talk about what is diabetes from a modern medicine viewpoint. Before we begin, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please click on the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so that you won't be missing any of my future videos. And if you find that this video can be helpful to your friends and family, please help to share it with them. So now, let's get started. In one simple sentence, Diabetes is a chronic health condition in which our body is having difficulty in moving glucose from the blood to the cells so that our blood glucose level becomes too high. Glucose is an energy source that is derived from food, and after intake of carbohydrates, our body digests and absorbs the glucose into the bloodstream through the intestines. And then the blood will bring the glucose to all parts of our body, and the cells will use that as energy to function properly. However, the glucose cannot just walk into a cell, like we cannot just walk into a locked building. We need a key, and that key is insulin. Insulin is a hormone that is being produced in the pancreas, and it acts as a key so that the glucose can go into a cell and to fuel the cell. Unfortunately for people who have diabetes, either the pancreas cannot make enough insulin, or the body could not make good use of the insulin that it has produced. Therefore, the blood sugar level is high because it cannot transfer the blood glucose from the blood to the cells. And you might be thinking, what is a big deal of having a high blood glucose level? Well, it is actually a big deal because it can cause a lot of health complications. But we will talk about that later. For now, let's talk about the types of diabetes. There are four main types of diabetes. Type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, gestational diabetes, and others. So now let me explain one by one. In type 1 diabetes, the body produces little to no insulin. And the reason is because T cells, which is in from our immune system, usually only attacks foreign cells. But there is a malfunction so that it attacks the insulin producing cells from the pancreas. So as a result, we produce less insulin and therefore a higher blood glucose level because the glucose cannot be transferred from the blood to the cells. Type 1 diabetes is typically caused by genetics, autoimmune deficiency, or viral infection. Patients are often diagnosed at a relatively young age. This can happen suddenly and in a lot of cases, people don't even know they have type 1 diabetes until complications arise. Treatments of type 1 diabetes are often insulin therapy in which insulin is injected into the body. While I was doing research on this topic, I have read many tragic cases due to complications from diabetes. For example, a 26-year-old type 1 diabetes patient went blind due to complications. In another case, a young man died suddenly and unexpectedly due to complications from type 1 diabetes. 
So anyone with type 1 or diabetes in general should never let their guard down no matter how young they are. In contrast to type 1 diabetes where little to no insulin is being produced, type 2 diabetes actually have no problem in producing insulin. So insulin levels are normal. However, the body's tissues are not responding to it. So even though we have a key, the cells are not responding. So the glucose stays in the blood and it has a relatively high concentration. And this we call insulin resistance. Type 2 diabetes is slow progressing. Most people with type 2 diabetes actually do not even know that they have it until years later. There could be multiple reasons why people get type 2 diabetes. And some of the common ones are poor diet, lack of exercise, hypertension, and genetics. So that is why a healthy lifestyle is so important in dealing with type 2 diabetes. The third type of diabetes is gestational diabetes. This happens to pregnant women and it usually happens in the third trimester. Most people will go back to normal after giving birth, but they often have a higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes later on in their lives. But this type of diabetes is not our focus in this series. The last type of diabetes is others, which is usually from other diseases or issues. For example, medication side effects or other diseases such as pancreatitis or pancreatic cancer. However, these type of diabetes are not within our focus in the series and we will only focus on type 1 and type 2 diabetes. There are four main symptoms in diabetes, which is free excess and one deficient. The one deficient is deficient in weight, meaning a weight loss. And that is because the blood glucose cannot be transferred into the cells so that the cells starve. When glucose is unavailable as a source of energy for the body, the muscle cells and fat cells need to break down to provide energy. So that causes weight loss. Due to the starving of the cells, the patients feel more hungry, therefore they tend to eat more. And that is the first excess, excess eating or polyphagia, where poly means a lot and phagia means eating. The second excess is excess in urine or polyuria, where poly means a lot and urea means urine. And that is because there is a lot of glucose in the bloodstream, so the kidneys will try to get rid of some of the excess glucose through urination. And that is also why the urine is sweet in diabetic patients. And because glucose is osmotically active, water tends to follow it and therefore there is an increase in urination. By the way, have you ever thought of what does the word diabetes mean? Well, the full name is actually diabetes mellitus, where diabetes have a Greek origin meaning to pass through, and in this context, having a large discharge of urine, and mellitus means sweet. And because there is an increase in urine, that could lead to dehydration, which in turn leads to polydipsia, where poly means a lot and dipsia means first. And because of dehydration, diabetic patients tend to drink a lot and being thirsty, and that is a third excess, excess of drinking a lot of fluids. All these symptoms do not necessarily have to come at the same time, but if you do realize that you might have some of these symptoms, do not hesitate to go and take a test. So now we know what diabetes is, the types and the symptoms. How can we determine if a person is diabetic and what level of blood glucose is considered high? There are three main ways of diagnosing diabetes. The first one is the fasting glucose test, which means the patient needs to fast for 8 hours before taking the test. So no food nor drinks besides water. The second test is the glucose tolerance test in which you are given glucose and your blood is being measured 2 hours later. And lastly, the A1C test. When sugar enters your bloodstream, it attaches to hemoglobin, a protein in your red blood cells. Everybody has some sugar attached to their hemoglobin, but people with higher blood sugar levels have more. The A1C test measures the percentage of your red blood cells that have sugar-coated hemoglobin. This test is a golden standard because the first two methods are measuring blood glucose for that instance. But the A1C test can reflect the blood glucose situation in the past 2-3 to three months and it does not matter the time of the test, if you just ate or not, or if you have injected insulin or not. And there could be 3 kinds of results from each of the tests. Number 1, normal, which means your blood glucose level is good. For fasting blood sugar tests, 
it should be 99 mg per deciliter or below. For glucose tolerance tests, it should be 140 mg per deciliter or below. And A1C tests should be below 5.7%. The second result is prediabetes or borderline diabetes. And that basically means that your blood sugar level is not as quite as high as diabetes yet, but it is higher than normal. So for the fasting blood sugar test, it should be between 100 to 125 milligrams per deciliters. For glucose tolerance tests, it should be between 140 to 199 milligrams per deciliters. And the A1C test, between 5.7 to 6.4%. So anyone with borderline diabetes should be very cautious in their lifestyle and try to prevent it to develop into diabetes. And the last result is diabetes, where the fasting blood sugar test is 125 milligrams per deciliters or above. Glucose tolerance test, 200 milligrams per deciliters or above. And lastly, A1C test, 6.5% or above. Some countries might not use milligrams per deciliter as a unit, but instead using millimoles per liter. The conversion is simple. One millimole per liter equals 18 milligrams per deciliter. Complications are the scariest part of diabetes, and some of them are life-threatening. And in fact, preventing complication is one of the top priorities of diabetes treatment. So in this series, I will spend one video to talk about some of the complications and how to prevent each one of them specifically. So who are the people who have a higher risk of developing diabetes? For type 1 diabetes, family history and genetics are the major factors. So if your parents or siblings who have been diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, then you have a higher risk of developing it as well. For type 2 diabetes, there are certain groups of people who have a high risk, and here I'll list out 10. Number 1. Over 40 years of age. Number 2. People with a history of impaired glucose regulation. Number 3. Obese or overweight. Number 4. Lack of exercise. Number 5. Immediate family members who is diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Number 6. Women who had gestational diabetes when they were pregnant or if they had given birth to a baby who weighed over 9 pounds. Number 7. People with high blood pressure. Number 8. People with dyslipidemia, which means an abnormal amount of lipids in the blood. Number 9. Women who have PCOS, or polycystic ovary syndrome. And number 10. People who take antidepressants over the long term. So if you are one or more of the above 10 groups of people, don't be too worried yet but just be mindful and be extra cautious of your lifestyle and make sure you go check your blood glucose level regularly. So that is all for today's video. Hopefully you can understand more about diabetes from a modern medicine perspective. So next week I will be talking about diabetes from a traditional Chinese medicine or TCM perspective and also how TCM can be especially helpful in today's world. And after that, I will be talking about prevention, remedies, and also treatments for diabetes. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching today. If you have any questions, leave in the comment section below. Stay healthy and I will see you next week.